Alfred Potter taking the oath as Lieutenant Governor. We'll have highlights from the inaugural balls on St. Thomas, along with the ceremony and military parade on St. Croix. Plus, in one of his last actions, Governor John DeYoung granted pardons to 16 individuals. More details on those approved and the process. Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining us on this edition of News 2. Happy Three Kings Day. I'm Sandra Demand Singh. Topping our newscast, inauguration activities continued on the Big Island Tuesday for Governor Kenneth Mapp and Lieutenant Governor Alfred Potter. Just like on St. Thomas, the day's activities began with an early morning service to bless the incoming administration before they take office. Then everything moved down west for the post-inaugural ceremony. News 2's Erica Parsons has more. Masses of people packed Frederickstead for the post-inaugural events here on St. Croix. Everywhere you turned, there were people waiting. They waited for hours, actually, just to hear from the team they elected to bring change. And Governor Mapp and Lieutenant Governor Potter used their time to talk about just how they would do that. Spectators lined the streets from before 10 Tuesday morning to wait for the motorcade that brought the territory's eighth elected governor and his lieutenant governor into Frederickstead. I wanted to be here. This is a new administration. This is a new beginning. And um, as a candidate said, the senatorial candidate said, we have to focus forward. And I want to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. So I wish the governor and, and the governor and the lieutenant governor rather uh, success and the new legislature success in the future because we have a very difficult job ahead of us. The ceremony began with prayer to bless the new administration and then local songstress Lorna Freeman sang the national and local anthem. What's so Lieutenant Governor Osbert Potter's daughter introduced him, and he told the crowds that only working together with the community would things get done. It's going to be a hard task ahead. We know that. It's going to be a difficult task ahead. We also know that. What we know also is that we cannot, we cannot get this done without your continuous support. Governor Kenneth Mapp's brother got emotional as he introduced him, telling the crowds the new governor is suited to the job. It is my distinct pleasure and honor to present a man who can and rise to the challenges and opportunities that being governor shall afford him. My brother, your friend, good night. himself paid homage to his mother before telling everyone gathered that he is committed to working hard, especially for St. Croix, to get to a better place. We're going to begin the process and continuing to form this government and to begin to give direction to our agency head that we want to start with people seeing a difference in the quality of life. We are committed to rebuilding our towns and our cities and putting our people to work. And that's just what people want. Erica Parsons, News 2. Meanwhile, there was a military parade that took place during the post-inaugural ceremony. The governor and adjutant general saluting armed forces and law enforcement as they passed by the bandstand. All military eyes faced right as they passed Brigadier General Rinaldo Rivera and the territory's new chief commander. Dozens of youth groups school, marching bands, church organizations, majorettes, non-military groups, and field bands took part in the military parade. Each of the entries stopped to perform before Governor Mapp and all the spectators present. Meanwhile, hundreds of Virgin Islanders attended the first set of inaugural balls Monday night on St. Thomas. One ball was held at Sugar Bay Resort, while the other was at Marriott's Frenchman's Reef. There was music, food, and dancing in both locations. The newly elected governor and lieutenant governor took the opportunity to mingle and thank their supporters. The balls are part of the ceremonies marking the beginning of the Kenneth Mapp and Osbert Potter administration. Inaugural balls are also being held on St. Croix Tuesday and on St. John Wednesday. Now, inaugural events continued on St. Croix, as we just mentioned, late this afternoon. Here's a look at the schedule. Now, the inaugural balls kicked off, as we just mentioned, at the Marriott Frenchman's Reef Resort and Sugar Bay last night on St. Thomas. Tonight at 9 p.m., 
It's at Divi Carina Bay Resort, the Buccaneer Hotel, and St. George Botanical Garden. Then final events on St. John, from Wednesday, 11 a.m., the ecumenical service will be held at Our Lady of Mount Carmel Catholic Church. At 12.30 p.m., a post-inaugural program at the Frank Powell Park in Kings Bay, a luncheon at the Waterfront Bistro. At 2 p.m., public reception at Government House. Then the ball will be held at the Westin Resort. Again, all events are open to the public, with the exception of the luncheons. Tickets must be purchased for the balls. Governor Kenneth Mapp issued a proclamation in one of his first official acts authorizing administrative leave for non-essential government employees on St. John to enjoy and to attend the inauguration ceremonies on Wednesday. Now, leave is granted to non-essential employees who are residents of St. John assigned and working on the island of St. Thomas Wednesday, January 7, 2015 from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. as well. The leave does not apply to essential employees and employees on a regular or rotating shift, employees on annual or sick leave immediately preceding or immediately following the time period administrative leave is granted will not receive the administrative leave. Well, despite all the inaugural activities on St. Croix Tuesday, the annual Fusion Rican Breakfast still took place in the early morning hours of St. Rican's Day. The event began with a tramp through Christensted all the way down to the Kristen Shan Hendricks Vegetable Market. There were hundreds gathered for free breakfast, which is all donated by volunteers. The food consists of numerous local dishes and local drinks. The annual Three Kings Day celebration was started in 2005 by George Bagoon O'Reilly, former Lieutenant Governor Gregory Francis, organized the event with O'Reilly and kept it going even after O'Reilly's passing five years ago. Well, transitioning from one administration to another is always a busy time as the new administration gets in gear, but it's also a time for the old administration to wrap up some outstanding issues and make last-minute decisions. For former Governor John DeYoung, one of those decisions is giving persons convicted of crimes a second chance. News is our April Knight is standing by with details. Standing in one of his final acts as governor of the Virgin Islands, former Governor John DeYoung commuted sentences and pardoned several individuals, some of high-profile crimes. Perhaps the most noticeable was his pardon of Willis Todman, former administrator of the government employee's retirement system. Todman was charged with fraud, grand larceny, and obtaining money under false pretenses, and convicted in October 2011. The trial showed Todman forged a signature so he could receive a second salary of up to six figures, one that the GRS board said he never asked for. The governor also commuted two sentences, one of them for Henry Curtis Sampson, who has served almost 20 years of his life sentence for first-degree murder. According to Bureau of Corrections physician Leslie Burton, Sampson has cancer and is not a candidate for chemotherapy or surgery, and Golden Grove has neither staff nor space to take care of him 24-7. Another commuted sentence was that of Jeremy Davis, who pleaded guilty to voluntary manslaughter in 2011. According to the governor, Davis, like Todman, had no prior criminal record and is backed by letters of support and commendation. Avery Lance, who was released in 2009 after serving 25 out of his 40-year sentence for second-degree murder, was also pardoned. Other pardons were for fraud or embezzlement, assault and domestic violence, burglary, forgery, and unauthorized possession of a firearm. Sandy, in total, the former governor commuted two sentences and pardoned 16 individuals, at least one of which was already released from prison, except now the crimes for which they were pardoned will be erased from their criminal record. Sandy, back to you. Thanks for that, April. Now, all of the pardons and commuted sentences were signed by the former governor on December 31st. Turn our attention overseas. It's a historic day on Capitol Hill full of ceremony for new lawmakers and a little bit of drama as members elect leaders, including the House Speaker. Republicans control both the House and Senate for the first time in eight years, and that's already setting the stage for clashes with the White House. Craig Boswell is on Capitol Hill with more.
Do you solemnly swear that you will support your The Senate welcomed 13 brand new members. Vice President Joe Biden administered the oath to them and 21 others newly reelected. Congratulations, Senator. With the new GOP majority, the senior senator from Kentucky, Republican Mitch McConnell, took over as the new majority leader. We recognize the enormity of the task before us. We know a lot of hard work awaits. McConnell's predecessor, Democrat Harry Reid, wasn't in the chamber. The new minority leader tweeted a photo as he recovers from an exercise injury. <laughs> On the House side, a slightly more raucous affair with the first order of business, the election of the House Speaker. A handful of Tea Partiers challenged John Boehner's leadership, but the body re-elected him to a third term. We're glad and humbled uh, to begin anew as servants of the People's House. The first day of the 114th Congress wasn't all ceremony. The GOP agenda calls for quick action on the Keystone XL pipeline. We're anxious uh, to get started. The White House responded with a veto threat. That if this bill passes this Congress, uh, the president wouldn't sign it either. The debate over the 1,700-mile oil pipeline will likely be an early indication of how long the spirit of cooperation lasts in this new Congress. Craig Boswell, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Meanwhile, keeping our eye on the economy, here's the New York Stock Exchange with our stock market watch. The Dow, NASDAQ, S&P all down. The Dow 133, NASDAQ 59, S&P 18. Coming up on News 2, what hotel on St. Thomas received the recognition as one of the world's top 10 beachfront hotels? We'll tell you. Two days before Christmas, De Young signed an executive order number 472-2014, which created the Virgin Islands Public Sector Occupational Safety and Health Council within the office of the governor. The governor met with Mr. Mike Levy, Assistant Regional Administrator for New Jersey, New York, Puerto Rico, USVI, United States Department of Labor, Occupational Safety and Health Administration, and his team, that was on October 30th, 2014. Now at that meeting, Levy recommended the creation of a safety council to have oversight of the Virgin Islands Division of Occupational Safety and Health Program and to promote the safety and culture of the Virgin Islands. The council is required to hold bi-monthly meetings and submit quarterly reports. De Young also submitted the first renewal of agreement for medical health insurance with United Healthcare Insurance Company as negotiated by Government Employees Health Insurance Board of Trustees for the Government of the Virgin Islands, the Virgin Islands Housing Authority, the University of the Virgin Islands, which will allow for coverage to continue for all eligible retirees. The first renewal, once ratified, is effective January 1, 2015 through December 31, 2015. The Governor highlighted the fact that the 38th Legislature in Act 7584 also ratified the First Amendment to the Agreement for Medical Health Insurance, which provides health insurance for retirees who were not enrolled in Medicare Part B at that time. Well, St. Croix Business and the University of the Virgin Islands are teaming up to develop a progressive computational science and modeling curriculum. Students within the new curriculum would receive cutting-edge training in decision sciences, predictive an analytics and econometrics. An enhanced computational science and modeling curriculum will help UVI students become more competitive in the increasingly important world of big data. That came from Michelle Nevis, UVI's director of major gifts. He said, in addition, this represents a very beneficial cultivation of our community's resources. Well, meanwhile, spring semester classes at U UVI, they're scheduled to begin next Monday, January 12th. Now a week of orientation activities is planned for new students enrolling at UVI on both campuses. That's from Wednesday, January 7th through Saturday, January 10th. New student advisement and registration is scheduled for Wednesday, January 7th on the St. Thomas campus and Thursday, January 8th on the Albert A. Sheen campus in St. Croix. All newly matriculate, matriculated students are required to participate in orientation activities prior to the start of the semester for academic advising and development of their class schedules. President David Hall and Mix and Mingle events, uh, a, a message from him, they're all scheduled on both campuses. On St. Thomas, 
the campus official welcome by UVI President Dr. Hall Wednesday, January 7th from 8.30 a.m. And there will be a mix and mingle later that evening with entertainment and a student organization fair that's scheduled for Thursday, January 8th. Meanwhile, on St. Croix at the Albert H. Dean campus on St. Croix official welcome by the UVI president. That will be on Thursday, January 8th at 6 p.m. in the Great Hall. Also with a mix and mingle that evening. Then a clubs and organization day that will be on Friday, January 9th. Well, this month, a contingent of educators and students from overseas will be visiting the Virgin Islands as part of an effort by the VI Department of Education to bolster relations between the territory and Denmark. Two sets of students from Denmark have already visited St. Croix and another batch is expected on the 12th of January. That's according to a former Commissioner of Education, Donna Fred Gregory. Another group is scheduled to arrive in the territory in February. Activities including a mini conference and historical tour, they're all planned for the guests. Well, Commissioner of Agriculture, Dr. Louis E. Peterson, Jr., expressed commendations and congratulations to Mr. Lucas Laplace on his graduation from Fort Valley State University in Fort Valley, Georgia, where he received a Bachelor of Science degree in the field of Agricultural Engineering Technology on December 13. The graduate of the Central High School Class of 2009 on St. Croix participated in the Department of Agriculture's 2009 six-week summer initiative. Department of Agriculture requested and received a full academic scholarship from Fort Valley State University to fund his undergraduate studies. Lucas has already been hired by NASA as an environmental specialist. His parents are Mr. Lawrence Laplace and Mrs. Lucy Laplace. Congratulations to him. Bolongo Bay is a boutique Caribbean resort with its own 1,000 foot long beach lined with palm trees and resident iguanas strolling by. That's what begins the headline in Somers.com. Beachfront rooms are about three feet from the edge of the white sand beach, they go on to say, so you can enjoy a quick dip without having to bump into anyone on your way. That is just why the small hotel here in St. Thomas received that recognition as one of the world's top 10 beachfront hotels. The Dumain family are proud of the recognition as they celebrated 40 years recently. The hotel is a family operation started in 1974. Be sure to stick around. You missed your AccuWeather forecast. It's coming up next.